Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I have a feeling this is number 111 or 112, I'm not sure. There's a biggie down there, he's just run past, I don't know. Uh, if he comes back I'll pick him up and he'll say hello to you guys. But I'm only here for a second really because this is just where I start leading on from last week. I've literally just got to the end of Where Have All the Bullets Gone by Spike Milligan. There will be a full review of that coming soon, it's like the last one of his war memoirs. By this point the war is over, so it's just him going around and playing the trumpet, you know. But still pretty interesting. And uh, up next I'm going to read Ursula K. Le Guin. I think it's called City of Illusions. Something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to it. Hello everybody, it's currently about five past five on Monday the 25th of January. I finished reading City of Illusions by Ursula K. Le Guin. It was alright, it's kind of like an early, well it's like a precursor almost to uh, The Left Hand of Darkness. At least it was written just before it so there are some similar themes and stuff going on. Uh, but yeah, overall I quite enjoyed it, 3.5 out of 5, it was alright. Uh, and now I'm reading The World Jones Made by Philip K. Dick, and this is great. Um, I'm going to read you the blurb here, because then that will give you a better idea of what it's all about. Earth had never before known a dictator like Jones. His body was unremarkable, but with his mind he could see a year into the future. With total accuracy, he could predict exactly what was going to happen to himself and to civilization. In a world ravaged by atomic war and denied the false comfort of absolute belief by its relativist rulers, Jones offered a credulous people the precious gift of total certainty. He swept to power bloodily and triumphantly but Jones had a blind spot the huge mysterious blob-like drifters that came floating down from outer space through the unconscious agency of these beings security agent Cusick saw his one chance to rid Jones's world of its tyrannical maker Hugo award-winning author Philip K. Dick has blended fast action and intelligent speculation in a, in a characteristically superior story of inventive science fiction and yeah so far it's cracking um, probably one of the better books I've read so far this year although it is like only January so that's not saying too much. I had uh, some diversity training over Zoom with, with, with the Wickham Art Centre lot representing uh, earlier today and I've also been hard at work finishing off a bid for some money. Uh, it's the Culture Recovery Fund grant. Basically the government is pumping some money into arts institutions to try and keep them alive and so we're applying for that and obviously I'm writing the bid and helping out with all that. But it's pretty much there, I can't do anything else at the moment. I've also been up all night, so I'm very tired. So I'm gonna go to bed soon, Biggie's through there, looking very cute. So I'm gonna make myself a hot water bottle, and go and cuddle up with Biggie, and watch Red Dwarf, and read some more of The Thornbirds by Colleen McCulloch. So that's, that's the plan for this evening. But I'm kind of waiting around for a bit, just in case I hear back from people with their feedback on this document, so I can process it before I go to bed, because it has to be submitted by 12 noon tomorrow. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello, it is me. It is Tuesday, the 26th of January. It's 9am, which is surprisingly early for me. There's some really weird shadows going on over there. That's weird. My camera is also focusing on the green screen, as it does. Um, it's still snowy outside, which is a bit of a pain, because I want to go to the post office to drop some parcels off, and I have to go up a massive hill, and it's just covered in ice, so I, I can't. So I'm basically just lurking around at home, to be honest. Uh, yesterday wasn't a particularly good mental health day, so I went to bed at about 6pm, and woke up about 8am today, so that was a good 14 hours sleep. We have a funding bid due for the art centre, it has to be submitted by noon today so I'm just doing the last bits of work on that and like people are sending me files over to upload and stuff. So I'm cracking on with that, I am watching The Chase on YouTube as always. I'm currently still reading The World Jones Made by Philip K. Dick, um, which is really good at, actually, it's probably like the best of all these little pulpy sci-fi novels I've read recently. And this is about a guy who can see into the future but only for a year and it kind of follows the implications of that and then he gets his own followers and stuff but obviously you can only see in, in, in front of him in a year and like there's points at which he's fighting in a war and he can see a year into the future and he knows the year is still going and he knows he's still alive but he's seen all of the horrors and he still has to go ahead and do it anyway so it's got like these quite interesting I guess questions and little thought experiments in it which is what really keeps me, me reading books so that's going well and then I'm, I've got the next Witcher book by Andrzej Sikowski after that I made some good pro set progress last night as well with um, The Thornbirds by Colleen McCulloch. 
So I'm on page like 430 of like 560 now. It has tiny, tiny print. So I'm reading like 10 pages a night. And the reason I'm reading it is because there's a character in it called Dane. And Dane is getting old now. It's got to the point at which Dane has just met, met uh, Father Ralph de, de Bricassal, or however he pronounces his name, I don't know. Because he's, he's Irish and he's in Australia, but that sounds like a French name to me. But anyway, Father Ralph met Dane, and I don't think either of them realized that he's, he's the boy's daddy. Uh, and now Ralph and Maggie are just having an awkward conversation. They're like, they've been in love with each other all of their lives and stuff. And they got it together once, which is where Dane come from. So Dane is the priest baby. Um, yeah, and it's I guess just like a tragic tragedy of their lives. They kind of waste their lives because he's married to the church, and so she marries some dude who she hates and who hates her. Yeah, and there's big fire and people die, but it's a good little read. So yeah, I'm, I'm reading that, and I think that's where I'm at at the moment. Go do some filming today. Yesterday I did some recording for a song called uh, Can't Tell You That I Love You But You're Awesome. It was gonna have like the full band treatment, but really it just sounded best with, it's got three acoustic guitars, one panning out the left, one panning out the right, one straight down the middle. All three of those are playing the same thing and they've all got a little tiny bit of echo on. And then just some chilled out vocals, some backing vocals, and some strings and piano. So I, I tried to add bass, tried to add percussion, tried to add electric guitar, tried to add ukulele. None of them sounded good, so we just stick with the strip back recording. And today I might record um, I'll Be Mad If You'll Be Boring, which is the last of the songs that I have for me to record. And then I'm gonna start recording some stuff for the old. Hello everybody, it is Wednesday, the 27th of January, and uh, I slept pretty well again last night. I, I went to bed about nine, got up about nine again. Uh, I finished reading The World Jones Made by Philip K. Dick, and this was really rather good. I think I probably gave this, it's a strong four out of five. Um, basically, it follows this guy who can see the future, like a year into the future, and um, there's a lot of, sort of sci-fi stuff going on as well, but it's just really interesting to follow the effects that this has on society, the fact that this guy can see the future. And now I'm reading Baptism of Fire by Andrei Sapkowski, so this is one of the Witcher books. I don't know at what point we are here. I think this is number four, um, and I'm just sort of slowly working my way through that. So once I've finished reading this one, I'll, I'll order the next book in the series. Um, I'm currently I've got a rule that I buy six new books a month, but as I'm also trying to cut down on my TBR, like normally what I would do is I'd like at the start of February I'd be buying six books. Um, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm ordering one at a time, and each time one arrives, I then order another one, and that should hopefully give me. Um, like enough momentum to make sure that I'm actually reading books faster than they're arriving. So I'm still driving down my current TBR pile. So I think I've got 108 books currently to be read. I've got uh, Asterix, the second Asterix volume coming to me. I can't remember what the title of it is. Uh, oh, it's something about this, this um, maybe the Golden Sickle, Asterix and the Golden Sickle or something like that. I think it, I can't remember what the word is in French, it's something like Asterix et le siècle d'or or something like that. But anyway, second Asterix book coming to me in French, so that'll be my bedtime book soon. And then once that's arrived, I'll order the next Witcher book. And then I'm hoping that by the time the next Witcher book arrives and it's time for me to order the, another new book, that by then I'll have finished the Asterix book and I'll be able to do another Asterix and so that's kind of the plan. Uh, probably some more of Agatha Christie's uh, Mary Westmacott books as well which are the books that she wrote under a pseudonym. So I have this like crazy long wish list of I think 3,000 books that I want to read and I've currently read about 2,400 so that's kind of good because I think if I hit 3,000 by the time I'm 35 average person lives till they're 70 or whatever three score and ten right so if by the time I'm 35, I've read the number of books I still want to read, technically or theoretically, maybe I'll, I'll manage it before I die. Although stuff constantly goes on the wish list, so you know. But yes, that's where we're at. I'm gonna go do some client work now. Susie's coming over this evening, so I'll do some cooking. I think that's all I got for you. All right, hello everybody. It's your boy Dane here. It is currently, what day is it? Thursday? Yeah, I think it's Thursday, the 28th of January, 12.48 p.m. Just doing a little bit of filming. All I really have to film at the moment, actually, is this quick vlog, and then um, 
gonna do most of my review of Baptism of Fire by Andrzej Sapkowski. I haven't actually finished reading it yet, but I'm a good two thirds of the way there. I've actually done all my editing as well. I've got some more videos to upload. Basically, when I edit, I'm doing other stuff at the same time. So sometimes if I don't have any other stuff to do at the same time, like stuff just doesn't get edited. Um, but one of the things that I do is I manage my eBay store and I've recently been getting like job lots of vinyls and stuff. So that's kept me really busy, which is good. But I've now pretty much finished doing all of that. So I've just got like little tiny bits of filming to, to do today. And then that's it, I've filmed all my music. The album that I'm recording with my friend Dave is, I think I've done all my bits for it basically, apart from I need to do the cover design and stuff for it. Um, yeah, and we've got a single coming out soon called See You Next Tuesday. And I've recorded my stuff as well. So the next time I record music will be because I've written another song. So I need to write some more songs really. But yeah, I'm enjoying Baptism of Fire. It's probably my favorite of the Witcher novels so far. Uh, hoping to finish this today. And then I've got some Kurt Vonnegut to go on to. Uh, the Sirens of Titan, I think it's called. Uh, I read another chapter of La Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien in French last night. Um, they're just, well, Bilbo's just got lost under the Misty Mountains. And this one is called, I think it's called like, uh, Enigme dans le, I don't know, I can't remember. That whatever it means, I think it means we're in the chapter Riddles in the Dark, but I can't remember how they translated it into French. So yeah, that's good. Susie came over yesterday, I cooked some dinner, it wasn't very good to be honest, but we still had a nice enough evening. And uh, yeah, today I'm just being productive and shit. So I'm off to go and do that now. All right, just a quick mini update. It is still the 28th of January, whatever day that is, Thursday, I think. I've actually now literally finished all of my work, which is weird. I've never been at that point. Well, I have, but not for like months, maybe a year or something like that. So I officially have to stop working. Uh, I'm almost, I've filmed all of my filming. I've got a little bit of editing I'm gonna go and do in a minute. Then after that, like, I'm, I'm my own man, I can do my own writing and stuff, which is very exciting. I'm currently writing this short story called Aim of, Aim of Four Phallus Titanium, which is a lot of fun. And editing a book called The Lexicologist Handbook, which is to come soon. So that's all happening. This Saturday night at seven, from seven till 9 p.m., I'm running a writing workshop uh, with, as part of a Wickham Art Center online course thing. Yeah, should be good. Right. Hello everybody, it is uh, Friday, Friday the 29th of January. I'm currently reading The Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. It's quite good so far, probably edging for a four out of five. Very difficult to tell you what it's about, but some sort of sci-fi stuff going on. I mean, yeah, even the blurb does not make it easy. I'm gonna read you the blurb. Titan, one of the moons of Saturn and a place of delight. Among the inhabitants, Winston Runford, a space traveler caught up in chronosynclastic infundibulum, one of the hazards of intruding into space-time. Malachi Constant, the richest and luckiest man on Earth, now in exile, and what price is riches now? And Sato, a visitor from Tralfamador, a planet in another galaxy, bearing a message from one rim of the universe to the other. Some visitor, some message. So yeah, it's a bit nuts, but I am enjoying it. Uh, I've recently finished reading Baptism of Fire by Andrzej Sapkowski. That was very good. I gave that one a four out of five. Full review coming soon. And uh, yeah, I've got some vinyls in the post today, some seven inch singles, uh, including two by ABBA, one that's f from Greece. And what was the other one that I want to listen to? And another one. Oh, Boney M, Mary's Boy Child, the Christmas song. So uh, yeah, those are all right. Susie's coming over later. Uh, she's having dinner at hers before she comes over. So I'm currently just attempting to make myself a uh, vegan uh, steak and chips. So I'll let you know how that goes and just did a bit of filming. And I'm still kind of all up to date with editing and filming and work and stuff, so that's good. All right, hello. It is currently uh, the 31st of January, Sunday. Susie's been over this weekend. Uh, been kind of a crazy weekend, to be honest. I mean, we've mostly been being productive, so Susie's edited a blooper reel for Lord Literature and Madam Media, our YouTube channel, which I will link to below. Um, I did a writer's workshop for Wickham Art Centre last night, which was a lot of fun, although also very stressful. I had a panic attack just as it was kicking off, but luckily it was all okay. And um, yeah, been reading as well. So I finished reading The Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut, which I gave a four out of five, and there will be a full review of it coming soon. Nuts book, but a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to reading more Vonnegut. And now I'm reading The Fridge Hiker's Guide to Life, How to Stay Cool When You're Feeling the Heat by Tony Hawks. So he's the author of Round Island with a Fridge, where he literally went hitchhiking around Ireland. And uh, this book kind of takes some of the life lessons that he learned during his travels and distills them into things that, you know, we can learn from. So yeah, I'm enjoying that too, although it does feel a little bit derivative of the original Round Island with a Fridge, but hey-ho, I've already read that. 
So yeah, so that's it for this week's vlog. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.